If you prove you're vaccinated, you can get a $100 bonus. Some openings even have a $1,000 sign-on bonus. All right, check out this cuteness. Imagine being pregnant with your sister and then delivering your babies on the same day. Crazy, right? That's what happened to local sisters, Brooke and Allie. They say it was not planned to get pregnant together or even have their babies on the same day. Originally, their due dates were a few days apart, but baby girls, Palmer and Hudson, had other plans of their own. Palmer was waiting on Hudson because she went in two days before me. Yes. And her labor was a long time. And then she, took me a long time. she was waiting on her cousin. <laughs> Waiting on her cousins, right? Hudson and Palmer mark a fifth generation for the family, so they're going to be loved by mom, grandma, great grandma, and great great grandma, as you see right there in that video. So, congratulations to all of them. Those are some sweet babies. Still ahead, when we were all stuck at home during the pandemic, these boys decided to have some fun, and now a year later, they're making the most out of their newest design. Rhode Island brothers built a roller coaster in their grandparents' backyard during the pandemic. Sam Reed talked to the boys about how it created a life-changing decision. Like many people in the middle of the pandemic, now 21-year-old Elliot Ryan had some extra time on his hands while home from college at his grandparents' North Kingstown home. Last year, my little brother Noah, um, we were walking out here. He said, uh, wouldn't it be great if there was a roller coaster right here? This opportunity presented itself. Last year, after a promise of persistence to their grandfather, Elliot, alongside his cousin and brother, like, built this from the ground up. Yeah, I put in like a whole summer's worth of work. Which added some amusement to his home. <sighs> One and done. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Initial first drop. <laughs> seared in my memory. Our initial story made its way across the country. Afterwards, it's got an enormous amount of publicity. And this summer, when Elliot returned home from college, he saw the coaster had taken a turn. A tree had fallen on it during a winter storm. The whole end was uh, completely demolished, so that was a pretty big bummer. When Elliot came back, uh, he said uh, not to worry. Instead of leaving things be, they went right to work. It was really fun. It was a lot more fun than I expected it. He didn't want his dream to be left in limbo. And in the making, he ended up finding another one. Actually, it was a life-changing event. He really made a decision to uh, uh, go into engineering. Building this, I was like, yeah, I'll just do engineering, pretty much. Why not? <laughs> the family says the pandemic project has brought them a lot of excitement. They ride it at nighttime, pitched black, sometimes backwards. <laughs> and just like life's journey of ups and downs so far, it's been a heck of a ride. It's just like dreams come true pretty much and it's just awesome. And that looks like so much fun. I just want to hop on there myself. You know what the best thing is about building your own roller coaster? No lines. You can get on anytime you want, right? <laughs> All right, coming up, the Paralympics start next week. In just about 10 minutes. Right now, there are almost 300 people in Augusta hospitals with COVID. Of those cases, 12 of those are breakthrough cases, meaning people vaccinated. Of the almost 300, five are children. Our state is still seeing an overwhelming amount of positive COVID cases. Georgia confirmed almost 7,000 cases today. Richmond County had almost 1,000 COVID cases within the past two weeks. Columbia County still on the rise. They have 500, over 500 cases, and McDuffie County sitting below 100 within the past two weeks. Today, South Carolina reported more than 4,000 new cases. Aiken County still reporting over 1,000 cases within the span of two weeks. Edgefield County sitting at 146 positive cases, and Saluda County still less than 100 cases, sitting at 76 for the past two weeks. More states are adopting new rules to slow the spread of the Delta variant. Nationwide, the pace of hospital admissions is at an all-time high for people under 50, but new antibody treatments are becoming more available in the fight against the virus. Anthony Pura looks at the surge in cases. With the Delta variant surging across the country, ICUs at many metro area hospitals in Tennessee are filling up. There's assignments that are double what they used to be, and we just have to work as a team to get through the day. Just a few days ago, this second floor unit at Johnson City Medical Center was turned into a COVID-19 intensive care unit to keep up with demand. When we need to be trusted more than ever, um, people are doubting us and um, we need to trust the science behind the vaccine. Oh. 
With more young people getting sick, the battle to slow the spread has triggered tense scenes at school board meetings. This one in Louisiana. On Friday, Florida's Department of Education announced it will fine school districts that don't comply with the state governor's ban on mask mandates within 48 hours. Beginning next month, California will require proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test for anyone attending large indoor events of more than a thousand people, like games or concerts. A new mask mandate is now in effect in San Francisco for anyone who wants to eat, drink, or exercise indoors. We can move together against this common foe, the virus, not one another, um, to end this pandemic. Some hospitals and clinics nationwide are turning to monoclonal antibodies to treat COVID patients, like 42-year-old Scotty Johnson. I just really started feeling good about three or four days ago, probably. But uh, I feel like I'm like 90% now. Doctors caution such treatments should not be a substitute for vaccination against the virus. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. In a positive sign, the nation did hit 1 million vaccine doses administered yesterday for the first time in nearly two months. Breaking news just into the newsroom. A positive COVID case has canceled Glen Hill's football game for today. This game was supposed to be against Farrell High School. So we'll keep you updated with any other new information we learn from that. Well, as the Delta variant creates a surge, more jobs are requiring proof of vaccination. According to the job site, indeed, job postings with the requirement have gone up in the past month. Large companies like Walmart, Google, United Airlines, and more are doing a mandate for some of all of their work or all workers. Other jobs are not as specific. They ask for proof without mentioning the word COVID, but even those listings are going up. And for younger kids who cannot get vaccinated yet, those numbers are still on the rise. Hospitalization rates are setting new records. The biggest jumps are 30 to 39 year olds and kids under 18. And with only half the U.S. population fully vaccinated, underage kids are still in danger with no approved vaccine just yet. 19 vaccine reviews are the top priority uh, for the FDA. It is possible that we may have vaccines for under 12s before the end of the calendar year. President Biden has asked his education secretary to use his authority or even legal action against governors standing in the way of school officials as the mask debate continues. Unemployment numbers are out for the month of